Hello everyone, good morning. We're going to do our full moon activation now. So uh, many, many blessings. I um, was planned to do this last night. I came on and gave you a little bit of reason why I couldn't. And we weren't here and there was a lot of noise where I was unfortunately, but the beautiful thing is it's still a full moon. There's still a lot of full moon energies everywhere. And I spent the whole night out here on the couch with the windows open. We have a balcony looks over the Caribbean and it was all wide open and the moon was up over the water and it was just exquisite. So I hope that you will enjoy your uh, you're enjoying the full moon. So let's take a minute, talk about a little bit about what's going on for this full moon. So this full moon is, um, there's a lot of things, a lot of people are having a lot of intense experiences. It's not what I'm having, but I, uh, but what I have noticed is the underlying theme of authority. And the way that that works is Capricorn, which is what the moon is in right now, if you are born under that sign, you tend to have the uh, attitude, and I know I have twin children that are <laughs> this way, and my dad, um, you are your own authority. You really trust yourself first. You don't naturally take advice from others, really like, oh yeah, I'll do what you want. You're more like, no, excuse me, no. Um, I told Chris, my uh, beautiful beloved, he came into their lives when they were around eight. And I explained to him, the first thing out of their mouth is going to be no. And even if you're saying, hey, would you like a big Sunday, you know, a big ice cream Sunday or something wonderful, they're going to say no, always, always, no. And then it was like, hmm, well, I don't know, you know, I'll think about it. And that is something I saw in them that I didn't have, especially as a child. I was much more of a, a constant people pleaser and was always striving to please everyone and be good enough for everyone. And so as a hypnotherapist, a doctor of homeopathy and a 30-year healer, uh, what I've seen over time is all these different patterns that we have, and a lot of them relate back to the concept of authority. A lot of people actually bring in the fear of authority on purpose at a soul level to discover what is it that uh, is keeping me from owning my own authority and putting it right up in your face. And so in Light Body School, what I teach is that we go in and we learn how to move energy and sense energy and understand who we are, how our energy works and how the world works so we can manifest our lives on purpose the way we want. And the thing is, is that you, we have the ability to shift our energy, we also have the ability to decide what things mean. And we have the ability to unhook ourselves from old patterns. So beliefs, most people have heard about limiting beliefs. Um, those are what I call an energy pattern that's in a mental body. You have a subtle body, an energy body, that is your mind. It's where your subconscious is. And it's where all of these programs, these beliefs about yourself, about the world, about what's true, that's where they live, so to speak. And so when we can go in and shift the energy, then we can go more to the core instead of trying to always be up here in the story, trying to figure it out. This person did this to me. It's not fair. That was wrong. Um, uh, but, you know, I tried to get justice and nothing happened. It didn't work, right? So think about your relationship with the concept of authority. Um, governmental authority, uh, anyone in authority, um, you know, so what happens is a lot of people bring in um, at a soul level fear of authority because this is the life that they want to own their own authority. They want to be like, you know, I do trust myself. I'm listening to my inner self. I'm tuning into my inner voice. What's true for me uh, as much or more than I am to the exterior world. So we want to take in all kinds of information and definitely talk to somebody. If I'm going to put a new roof on a house, I'm going to get three different people in that are experts in roofs and I'm going to hear what they have to say. So I educate myself a little bit, right? But then I'm going to decide 
I'm going to decide based on me, not based on what my mother, my kids, my spouse, my friends, my boss, or any other person um, alive or dead that's in my head still telling me what's best for me. And this is what happens. I can tell you as a hypnotherapist, I've seen we have these patterns inside of our mental body that keep us attached energetically to things. So somebody might be attached to what their mother thinks because they want their mother to love them. That seems very normal and natural, right? But when we're little children, we have these experiences first time where we break a glass of milk and it spills and our parent gets upset, right? And they go yell and they scream and it's shocking and it hurts and they take that love away. And suddenly we're sitting there like, oh my gosh, I don't ever want to feel this again, ever. Are you kidding me? This is horrible. And that intensity of emotion that um, you have in that moment or even as adult is how intense that new belief or beliefs, uh, that new energy pattern is embedded. And um, the more that it, it borders on protecting yourself, like that was so horrible, I can't handle it ever again then the stronger that that belief is at keeping you from ever doing anything. And this is how you end up going off track from who you truly are. And you find all of the people on the planet going, who am I? What's my purpose? You know, um, and it's unhooking your energy from the, what Wayne Dyer used to say, your good opinion of others is one of the more challenging things in life because we are internally conditioned in our society and a little bit in our bodies for a survival thing to belong, to be in a group, to be in a tribe, to be accepted. And it feels like if we start to listen to our own inner authority and it goes against what certain people we know or love or our family or culture or town um, think is right, <laughs> then there's a conflict. And those are the conflicts internally in your mind, in your emotional field, in all the different layers of your light body um, that actually run your life, that tell you what to think, what to believe, what it means, if you should be offended. But those are just energy patterns running programs inside of you. So the cool thing is, is we can go into these energy patterns and have a communication, talk to them because we're energy. Everything is energy. We know how to relate to energy. And instead of taking things that we're afraid of and suppressing them, ignoring them or old feelings of shame or anger or guilt or betrayal or blame and hiding them, ignoring them, suppressing them, energetically, they don't go away. They stay in your energy field, and when they're locked away or suppressed or ignored or, or back, shoved back behind you, um, <clears throat> in some way you've now still attached yourself to that energy, right? So sometimes it feels like you feel heavy because if you're feeling shame and guilt, you're feeling heavy, oh, and it's a very low energy. And so energetically, that's what you're, you're – energy field is experiencing something heavy, like maybe you've loaded yourself up with a lot of burdens to carry through life, you know? Maybe you still have a lot of conversation in your head about whether you're good enough or you're not and what do they think and all of that. That's heavy, right? And so it weighs on our mind. Hi, everybody. <laughs> happy, happy full moon. And it weighs on our emotions and it weighs on our bodies and it weighs on our heart. Think about all the places you describe like feeling heaviness, right? And sometimes it feels like shackles. So what's fun in the work I do is I can see energy and I teach people to sense and direct and move energy so that you can really start to find the places that you are holding energy that is keeping you from hearing your true inner voice, from keeping you from owning your inner authority, that's keeping you from expressing yourself completely and fully. So the cool thing about the full moon is it's full. It's in full expression. It's illuminated. She's out there showing you everything she's got. And that's what you get to do today. So what we're going to do is play with two energies and go into this idea of authority, of owning our own authority, of listening to our own inner voice and making it the most important voice 
that we have. And then taking the energy of everyone else's opinions and all of the fears that we have and all of the things we were told growing up and all these energies that we are living inside of and begin to invite them up to say, hey, you know what? I know we've been walking this road together and it's real heavy carrying all this heavy baggage, you know? Some people experience the energy like shackles, literally like when um, in certain places or time periods, right? You might have been a slave and had shackles on your, uh, or prisoner or something, right? On your ankles or even your wrists or been tied. Um, People, when you go into this work, uh, light body work, you begin to experience your true center, which we call your soul signature frequency. It, everything is vibrating, right? So, so this is vibrating at a particular rate to make it look like purple glasses. And <coughs> this is vibrating at a certain rate to be this Lemurian seed crystal. Okay. And, you know, this is vibrating at a particular rate. And so I am as well. So each of us are a little planet Um, because we have this body, we have many more energy bodies around and within this body that make it work. And they're all just like, there's work in it. It's like a town, you know, people are coming and going, there's energy coming in and going out and up and down and all around. (laughs) We are quite something. And so that energy has a flavor or a particular tone or a particular sound or a song. I like, I, I like to tune into people and not just see their energy, but feel it, you know, feel it at a, like a, a, a certain song. And that's what we're changing. You've heard of law of attraction. Well, if you want to uh, become aware of, see, um, receive, be able to receive certain things in your life that you don't have now that you feel a desire for when you're, then the shift is an internal shift to saying, this is what I truly want in my heart. There has to be a way I'm going to listen to it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. That decision tells your mind, I want to see the solution. And it starts to serve you up the solutions. Call John, look over there, win a trip to Paris, meet the love of your life, whatever, right? All these things, they, but your mind, your conscious mind is teeny weeny and it can't handle, it can only handle this one thing at a time. So your mind, your, your energy field isn't going to serve you the solution to something. If you're going, I want more money, I want more clients, I want to find the love of my life, I want to move to a new place, I want to send my kids to summer camp, I want whatever it is, uh, you want to increase your health, you want to be able to communicate to your higher self or, or see angels or, or do healing work or whatever it is that you feel a stirring for in your heart, you have to listen to it and give it the respect that you give other authority outside of you. And so in this full moon, being a Capricorn full moon, this full moon is shining a bright light on us. And that's an energy coming into our energy field, right? And what we, all we have to do is tune into our energy field and continuously ask, I'm ready, right? To align with my truth, with my true self, to hear and feel and see and receive to awaken my senses so that I can easily communicate in an open flow every day with my highest self and beyond. Because we're in a multidimensional world. We are multidimensional people. We have a mental body. That's definitely a different dimension. You know, when you're in your head, you could literally be so far in your head, you don't even know what's going on around you in the room. And somebody goes, hey, what's up? You're like, what? Oh. (laughs) right? We definitely have an emotional body and emotional dimension to us because man, when grief or pain or something happens, even joy, right? Ecstasy, orgasm, you can tell, you feel it. You don't just feel it in your body. You feel it. And so we are going to navigate these areas sort of like a little trip. There used to be this thing, I think it was called magic school bus or something. It was a kid's show 
where this cool science teacher would put all her kids on the bus and the bus would shrink or whatever, and it would go. So if they were studying the blood system, the bus would shrink and go inside the blood system and travel around. Or if they were studying outer space, this bus would go to outer space. But that's the fun thing. That's exactly what we can do. We're going to travel through our field. And what our goal is today is to bring the beautiful moon with us and tune into the crystals in the earth. So the earth is a body too. It has a magnetic and a gravitational field. We have a magnetic and gravitational field. Whatever is the combination of all of the energies of you creates the vibration that you're putting out there. And that does make a difference in terms of what you line up with, what you see, what you experience, how you feel, all the different opportunities, and most of all, to be in your flow, to really to own your own authority, to unhook from other authorities, and simply let everyone be and you be in your center, and then you decide from here what is best for me, what resonates inside of me, what makes my, my belly, my solar plexus, that part of my will, and, and really a huge place where a lot of emotion, you know, is like, ugh, felt when people like emotional things happen between people. You feel like punched in the stomach, right? If someone says something, they didn't physically touch you, right? And, and then really feel that opening of the heart, and this is one of the best benefits of tapping into and owning your own authority um, in conjunction with this moon, which is going to shine a light on anything that you can see. So I want you to sort of pretend now that you're putting your goggles on to go on this magic school bus adventure. And these are goggles that are going to let you see the energies inside of you in any area that are shackling you, they're holding you down, they're tying you down, they're weighing you down, they're, they're you know, that, that are like a burden um, or that you feel stuck in. Sometimes the energy just literally feels like, you know, you're stuck in mud and you can barely move or quicksand. Um, so, excuse me, how do you describe how you feel about that? So when I say own your own authority, let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about in your own personal life. Do you speak up whenever you want to at work, at home, in relationships, in bed? Like, do you actually say what you want? And where are you on that scale? Because I spent most of my life being a massive overachiever, uh, people pleaser, until I realized achieving all these things that I was achieving <laughs> with the flavor of energy that, that inspired it or motivated it being really fear, right? Fear of if, if they don't like me, if I don't fit in, right? That sense that I had to please my dad and so on and so on, or I wouldn't survive. Then what this, these kinds of beliefs do is create lack of expression, lack of really opening your throat chakra, allowing the flow of who you are to really come down and come up and to weave together and to begin to create this uniqueness that is you. Do you really express yourself? Are you doing what you want to do in life, um, in your work, in your career? Sorry, I don't have my normal back pillow there. So one is being weird. There we go. <laughs> um, are you uh, in a relationship where you find it hard, even maybe it's with a parent who you've known your whole life, right? Or with your children that you have a hard time expressing or saying or speaking up uh, or getting your word in, right? To say who you are. So one way of owning your own authority is being willing to express yourself when necessary not always, right, authentically, and not hold yourself back and not feel. So what I see in people is a lot of energy blocks where you're holding things back, right? And you can see it up in the jaw sometimes, in the neck, and in the chest, and here. And it's like, oh, I want to say this, I want to say it, no, I can't right? So for me, when I first started to express myself, I would do things like cry a lot. <laughs> and I didn't want to cry. So my big thing was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to say what I want to say, but I'm not going to cry. <sighs> but it wasn't about that. That was my own program, right? That I had to get rid of later on. 
<laughs> that I had to not get rid of. In, in Light Body Work, what we do is we find these programs, we bring the energy in, we let it be uh, heard and seen the same way you want to be heard and seen, the same way uh, children want to, the same way probably parts of you and your inner child still want to be heard um, because mostly we aren't. And you hear it, you see it, you love it, you accept it, and then we show you how to transmute and reclaim that energy because you never get rid of your energy. So that's why you're either dragging heavy energy around or letting it hold you back or you're transmuting it and you're changing it up into higher energy that becomes fuel back into source energy that you can use to now focus on where you want to go to expand your ability to express yourself. Another way that um, not owning your authority or having a fear of authority and having a fear of authority, which I believe most people on the planet have, uh, and this is an intentional thing, a soul level thing, um, it creates all kinds of things, right? Like, oh, I don't want to go to the DMV or the IRS or I'm afraid. And so what I saw um, uh, was people not chasing their dreams, not receiving their success because they saw people in authority who didn't have integrity, who were mean or cruel or manipulative. And then in their mind, they thought, well, if I become powerful, influential, wealthy, strong, an authority, um, I don't want to become that. So they would literally hold themselves back. That could be a pattern that you have. Another pattern around authority is around money. So we do see a lot of abuse in the world. We do see a lot, unfortunately, where money is used. And it's not money that's the that's problem, right? It's what we do with it, the flavor we give it, the feelings we have around it, or if we're killing for it, if we're willing to you know, destroy the environment for it, if we're willing to let children die for it. You know, like what exactly is it? And we see that. And so... Uh, a lot for about eight years it was my specialty and now uh, I work with people around anything but it comes up very frequently is we have uh, often these patterns about good enoughness right I'm not good enough there's never enough why is not this enough that's a very common pattern in the world as well inside and this is what we clear and transmute but the thing is is that you have to acknowledge that we have it and the not enough pattern brings about, well, I'm never good enough. So then everyone almost, you put people on a pedestal, you're always trying to please everyone, trying to think, figure out what they want and it's exhausting and you can't do it, right? Um, you may have someone in your life, uh, often a parent or a spouse, a doctor, um, a teacher, an employer, uh, different people that you really do put uh, up as an authority. And there's nothing wrong with someone being an authority. It's whether or not you're giving your power away. Are you able to express yourself authentically in this relationship, in this presence, in this situation? Do you have a full centered energy when you're talking to them? Or um, another way of owning your authority is speaking. Like if you feel like you're meant to be a speaker, but you're afraid to get on stage, right? Or speak like this. And so there's all kinds of ways that you may, may see in our journey that we're going to begin in a moment of how and where this whole idea of owning yourself, owning your own authority and detaching, unhooking, dissolving, releasing, whatever you feel is the appropriate sensation for that energy of letting go of the good opinion of others and letting go of fear of authority, letting go of putting any other authority ahead of your own. Now your inner authority may tell you, I don't know anything about this topic. I'm going to go find someone who does and learn from them. That's of course perfectly fine. So when we acknowledge and recognize our own authority, we're able to see the beauty and power in other people's expertise and respect and love them much more clearly because we don't have the clogs and the blocks of the energy flowing freely through us. One of the most important things is you have to allow yourself to receive energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I see a lot in physical disease, in mental anguish, anxiety, stress, grief, emotional things like grief is that this tenseness and this 
constriction in the energy. Um, when you get into low energies like guilt, shame, blame, grief, it's very much like this. It's a heavy restrictive energy. There's no desire to open yourself up and go out there. Right. So when you get into these kind of energies, you have to bring in something that lifts that energy up from you and gives you just a little bit of a glimpse of light, right, of energy to pull out of it. And so what you want to look at is what is it that does inspire you? And then what do you think about it? So think about that right now. So we're getting ready to go on our full moon journey. The full moon is in Capricorn, which owns its authority, doesn't let anyone else tell it what to do. We're going to take that on, and the big, uh, the big bright moon is going to fully shine the light on all the parts of us. Then we're going to tune into the earth and to the crystals in the earth. So in Brazil in Arkansas and in Madagascar, uh, mainly the first two, there's huge, huge underground uh, beds and fields and caves, uh, and there's some in Mexico. There are quartz is almost all the way all around the world, quartz crystal. And if we've got different formations of it. Why is it important? Because if you've ever worked with crystals at all, you know that they use these in, I don't know if they still use them in TVs or radios or computers or whatever, um, but they can store and magnify energy. They can be programmed with certain energy. They can transmute certain energy. Um, if you're familiar with crystals in a different way, you know that they each carry a property. So this is quartz crystal too, but we call it amethyst because there's a different um, element in it that makes it come out purple, okay? But these grew, okay? So you have to remember these are conscious living beings. They grew and certain environment, um, when we're in an environment that nurtures us, we grow. When a plant's in an environment that nurtures it, it grows. When these are in an environment that wouldn't suit us, right? Pressure and steam and hot and and all the stuff that goes on in the earth, right, over long periods of time. But what these do, these are ancient beyond our comprehension. Way, I mean, so many whatever gazillions of years passed uh, when humanity even existed that these are so wise. So they carry certain energies They've got certain qualities. This is a citrine. This is an amazing, an amazing one. This is a smoky quartz, okay? This has different qualities. You can feel the difference in it, and it has different energies. So if you work with it like a friend, a consciousness, um, it has certain skill sets, certain <laughs> energies it brings to the table, right? Um, it's like choosing your profession, your best, best-selling or MVP basketball team, right? You're going to pick the five best people. Um, so some of these are um, very special. These are This is called the Lemurian crystal, and it's a, it's a communicator. It has these vibrations. And these were seed crystals. They were found just loose in the dirt. So what's happening now, it's been happening for a while, but on the planet is as you see the changes happening, Time is speeding up. Uh, structures in our society are falling apart. There's more awareness coming up around certain things. A lot of disturbance and destruction are shifting, right, in people's beliefs and what we think and, and how things work. And we see the same thing happening in the planet. She's, like, got volcanoes creating new Earth, right? So shifts are happening in every body. And it's causing the crystal beds in the planet to begin to awaken, in meaning, in a sense, their um, new vibrations, the shift and the change energies are moving through them as well. And so what happens is they're starting to do a few different things. They're starting to have um, a stronger communication with each other. So Arkansas is in the North Hemisphere, and Brazil is in the south, southern hemisphere, and they those two uh, crystal fields help to balance the poles of the of the planet, and um, they're now connecting 
because they're all around the planet, these in a way sort of like a grid or a communication grid, you can imagine like the cell towers are up and they're now connecting. So they're all calling each other. <laughs> um, that includes crystals in the ocean bed, crystals from civilizations like Atlantis and Lemuria who had enormous ones, who had temples of them, who used them for very scientifically to create all kinds of amazing things. And that, that means that as they connect and they start to increase and amplify their vibration, we are going to pick it up. So if you have been pick it, pick, picking it up, if you've been attracted even to the crystals in your home in a different way, if you've felt this connection to the mineral kingdom or the earth, if you've sensed this, if you've felt called to certain places, um, it could be that you're being uh, attuned, right? And you're beginning to communicate or accelerating and um, increasing your communication with these giant crystals. Now, a lot of the crystals that are in the earth and in the uh, ocean were used by our ancient civilizations and they still carry that knowledge of how they built these instruments. So during my Bliss Life retreats, I bring in uh, this woman with this machine called an Ajna light. Excuse me. And an Ajna is the name of this chakra that is often called the third eye chakra. And that's about your pineal gland, your pituitary, these different glands in the center of your brain. They connect you. This is your primary place. Your heart is a generator. But here, it's a really important gland that's been atrophied, that hasn't been used, and is reawakening and is allowing us to begin to perceive these subtle levels of life and communicate more and more to more of life. And so as that awakens, um, you can receive more. And what this light does is it, it, it's, uh, it's just white light, <laughs> but it, the man who created it worked for Steve Jobs at this really high level programming, kind of very creative out of the box, genius level programming kind of stuff. I forgot exactly what. And at the same time he was developing his yoga practice, three hours a day, never failing meditating, yoga, whatever. And I've never met him, but the people that I know have met him said you can literally see his aura. He glows when he walks in the room. So he left that and he went, uh, he lives in Thailand now, and he was uh, inspired to create this instrument. And because he had memories of being in Atlantis and being similar to, to what he does now, but doing it all with crystals. He said, I can very vivid images of me building these instruments, these machines that did all kinds of stuff with crystals. And so what he did, this one is, has a Tesla plate and all kinds of stuff. I'm not sure if there's any crystals in it. Um, but it awakens and decalcifies your pineal gland, which awakens and opens up your ability to receive, to communicate, right? To, to feel like you're getting guidance from your higher self or you can communicate with that inner authority, right? And, and the more that we open our abilities, which is a lot of what we do in Light Body School, right? We're activating our energies. We're learning about how our energy body works. We're, um, we're learning different ways of clearing and cleansing energy, detaching from energy, dissolving energy, finding these patterns in different parts of our bodies, mental patterns, limiting beliefs, right? Emotional scars, attachments to you know, people still having blame, things like that. Those are all energetic attachments. And so when we do that, the whole purpose is to increase our ability to align with the truth of who we are, to our soul blueprint, to what we're meant to be doing this time. And so when we, when we do that, we then start to have dreams. Like Chris, if he has... Uh, needs a solution. If it's a techie problem on the computer that he hasn't been able to solve, he'll go to sleep, he'll ask, and in a dream, he'll receive very specific directions. He'll stand up and walk straight to his computer, type in what he was shown, find it, and it works. Um, you'll increase your ability to lucidly dream. You'll increase your ability to 
to meditate or to focus, to maintain a focus so that you're going to be able to manifest what you want in your life much more quickly. That also means that if you move towards something you want that's different, so money is a good example. If you're making $5,000 a month now and you want to make $10,000 a month and you move towards that, there's going to be energy patterns, limiting beliefs, energies in your emotional field that are going to not be congruent with making $10,000. So you're, you're going to run into those. And the faster you move towards that, you start making money and pretty soon like, oh my gosh, I've, I've gotten really good at talking to clients and I can express myself now I really own my authority I know I'm excellent what I do I uh, oh my gosh I'm here for a purpose I am so aware I'm here for a purpose then you become on fire to find those clients to find those uh, jobs to find those ways to share what you know what you're here to do to express yourself right and so the really exciting part is, is as you own your authority as you increase um, your flow of energy you clear away the blocks you're gonna have a clearer connection you start to relax and let go of like oh no what will they think and am I good enough because you know you're in a constant communication with your higher self with all of these energies that are here to help you <laughs> right so when we get around crystals they are amplifiers isn't that exciting so above us we're, we're going to have the concept. She's actually right now below me, but depends where you live. <laughs> I watched her go all the way over uh, and down this morning. She's probably down now. And um, so we're going to tune into that full moon who's going to have that special light to help you look at any of the places where you're not owning your authority, where you're still holding on to authority, where you're keeping your, giving your power away to authority, where you're holding yourself back. Um, you're avoiding anything like that and then below us we're going to tune into the crystal core the crystal bed um, the, the core is actually molten uh, lead uh, at an unreal temperature um, of the earth but it, it it's it forms crystal in a line shape so it's very intriguing um, but we're going to tune into this crystal bed which is awakening now which is is going through its own changes and which now is remembering its soul pattern, its soul blueprint, its purpose, its mission is now to convey to us all of this wisdom. How do we work with the crystals? How do we work with the earth? How do we work as one? How do we become living in unity in a way that we can truly transition into this beautiful age that is coming upon us that is requiring us to let go of the old low beliefs the old low energies the old negativities around not enough not being a good good enough not sharing who you are not expressing who you are not being willing to let people see who you are because we need you we need your expertise we need your skills we need your heart we need your unique blend there it took a lot of effort and focus to get here for each of us to get here to be in this body this took a lot of effort thank you for being here um, each of us and when we work together with other people with herbs on the planet with plants right what we eat or what we take as herbs or create as homeopathy right to to we create from a natural substance into that um, the more we figure out that we're one and we tune into these channels of energy and wisdom that each of these beings have animals if you have animals in your house if you communicate with animals last week I spent an entire week with uh, dolphins and manatees and little three-week-old baby manatee I got to kiss and hug and feed and and um, I, I didn't get to touch the baby but there was a four-day-old baby dolphin um, swimming round and round with her mother I got to play ball with the dolphins to hug and kiss them to play just all organic play nobody's saying you have to do anything and and the, the level of bliss that's still in my body the 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 uh, honor the respect the unbelievable experience to communicate and interact with another living being and one that's so sentient and so amazing and such an incredible healer they literally raise your vibration and your your brain waves into bliss it's called brain bliss so you, everybody's blissed out around them <laughs> we're all like oh it's so good um but that and then being in the water being in the ocean because this is all in the ocean the natural ocean water cleansing me constantly being in the sun being in nature communicating connecting there's 
a sense of healing and wholeness that begins to happen. So this is about bringing us back into unity. And especially, you'll receive a beautiful healing from the crystal uh, crystals, the master crystals, the earth keeper crystals, all these beautiful crystals today. But if you are really tuned in, if you really feel drawn to the crystalline kingdom the way that I do, there's a whole new level of communication that's coming forward for all of us. So going to places like I'm going to be in a few weeks, so I hope you'll come join me in Arkansas, the giant, the biggest crystal beds in the planet. They're popping up in the earth. We're going to do on the new moon. We're going to do um, light body healing all day. You're going to learn healing and, and activation. We're going to have a love infusion in the morning. It's going to be amazing. We're just going to be like uh, infused in love energy and dripping. And we're in this place where the crystals are just coming up out of the ground. They're in the waters. We're going to swim in a lake where the entire bottom is a quartz crystal. We're going to go to some place called Crystal Island, um, which is the sacred place, again, with crystals. We're going to do an attunement where we tune into these crystals, and we tune into the crystals that were in Atlantis and in these other places on the planet and connect them all, and we're going to be a part of that. Can you imagine what it feels like just to be in that energy and with this energy cleansing and amplifying everything, but then to do this work, to learn this light body work, we're going to go in and do all kinds of, learn all kinds of ways of cleansing and clearing your energy field, moving energy, attuning your, uh, yourself to each layer, increasing that openness in your eye and how to apply it to money or love or health. And we're going to actually be doing the healing. So every day we're going to do that. We're going to start with some light body yoga and some knee and some beautiful things. And then we're going to have an outing. One day we're going to go, there's hot baths. There's five different mineral baths. And these are waters that have in these crystal grounds. So they're crystal infused and then they have minerals. So there's this other healing. So it's going to be purifying swimming in the lake with the crystal bottom and purifying, you know, to, to move all the energy and then have it released from our body in these ways with these sacred places. This is called oh, Washita, I think it is. Indians used to live here and the, it, the lakes and the hills are still filled with their sacred energy. And we're going, you're going to be able to gather crystals right out of the ground after we tune into them and you're guided to meet exactly the crystals that you are meant to work with and take home. And you can gather them and take them home. And of course, there's lots of places to buy them and all kinds of other fun things to do there. So it's July 13th to 15th and you go to lightbodyschool.com slash crystal lake. And um, I should type it in here. And if you want to come, uh, it's what? less than three weeks away, I think. So I hope you'll come and play with us. It's very, very exciting um, to find yet another place that's called us to come and do this work. So I don't know exactly what, I know the schedule is up on the website, it tells you everything we're going to do, everything we're going to take care of. It's very, very affordable. Um, and uh, there's lots of Airbnbs around this beautiful area we're going to be in. And we're going to be near a lake. And it's just going to be phenomenal. If you feel called right Right now to have a cleanse perhaps when you go through this full moon, cle full moon cleanse in a minute you'll have that clarity um, so we're going to tune into the crystals in the earth and they may just call you to work with some of the crystals that you have right now or just work energetically you don't have to have them I like to <laughs> um, but you can work with them and tune into these crystals in Arkansas ever since this came up a month or two ago and connected me with a woman there and this all began to take shape um, is and because I listen to the energies and let them guide me that's how I've owned my own authority is become a clear and open channel for that wisdom that's way 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 beyond me to come through me and I listen and I take the next step and the next step and follow it like a little treasure chest. So we've been guided here. There's very specific work that I meant to do with these crystals, this land and this place. And so if you feel called, then you're meant to do that too. And you're not only going to have your own healing, but we're going to be working with the earth. So we're going to be making a difference for the planet. We're going to be helping to take these energies from the crystal kingdom that are awakening these ancient knowledge and and amplify it we're going to be part of sending it out and infusing it into the world so that humanity 
um, not just the earth and the plants and the animals who are already tuned into this, but all of us and all of the ways that we communicate and interact and love and create in our world can become drawn up to a higher level. More love, more peace, more con uh, connection, more appreciation, more acceptance, more gratitude, and therefore more amplification of each of us being exactly who we're meant to be. So one more thing, thank you very much. One of my guides was saying as we're getting ready is one more place to look at authority is where you are forcing your authority over others. So look at any part of your life as we go through this journey, let yourself see let this light illuminate for you a place where maybe you are misusing your authority in a relationship in your life maybe you are out of fear um, using your to manipulate or to control um, or maybe not in a way that is perfect and maybe you can recognize that there's someone in your life that might be doing that as well so this is a big topic and what we're gonna do is just bathe it in love and light and have fun with the full moon all right good so let me take another sip of water and say hi Tabitha hi oh right hi Erica congratulations <laughs> Hi, Anna. Agree, exhausting. Yes, it's exhausting to try to please other people. I finally met a mentor in my life that really broke me free from that. He scared the crap out of me, but he was like, do you realize that you work, 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 and you're good enough for that person? They're pleased, they approve of you uh, for a little while. It could be a few minutes, a few weeks, a few days, a few months, but it's not going to last. So that's why we want to become our own authority. Uh, hi, Pamela and Christy, Bianca, Victoria, Carrie, hi, Carrie, Julie, Rita, Regina, hi, sweetie, Tamara, Oliki, Mohammed, I can't see the other ones, great, so, um, all right, so, you know, if you can hear me and lay down, go for it, if you can hear me and uh, want to, just typing this in here, want to sit, get comfortable, you want to make sure that you can just completely relax. And as you're doing that, go ahead and just begin to tune in to the thoughts that we've stirred up here, right? So all of the ideas around authority, owning your own, having a fear of it, holding yourself back from anything that you're doing. Um, and do, do 15, sorry, I got my face over there. There we go. So that's the uh, link there to the retreat in Arkansas. Maybe I'll see you there. Okay, good. Oh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about citrine. If you're not familiar with citrine, you should have a piece. Now I have little tiny pieces, you know, that are more like this. They're soft and, and tumbled that I can carry with me, put in my bra or in my purse or something. But citrine is an amazing uh, crystal because I don't know exactly what the element that's in it that makes it different than quartz crystal. You can see mine is kind of rutilated um, and has some of those lines in there. It's got very like gold rutilations and stuff. But it's this it's this light lemony goldish color. And citrine is an amazing um, element because it has it vibrates at a level that it is in capable of taking on low vibrations, low negative energies. So if you have this and you play with it or you keep it around you, it's gonna help you to not go down into those low energies, uh, you know, where you're feeling miserable and guilty and, and stuff like that. It, it's not gonna prevent it, but it helps. And in light body healing work, um, in the school, we take all kinds of vibrational energies. So maybe something like a flower essence or a homeopathic remedy, uh, a vibration of a crystal or of a color, because everything is vibration. We can take the vibration, combine them into a remedy, like a combination remedy. We have one called Clarity, and we activate it every day. Um, and it, one of the elements in it is, is uh, citrine, because it's able to bring so much clarity. Um, into it. So, okay, she wants to be held and so do you. Okay, thank you. Sometimes I don't have enough uh, hands for the ones that want to be held. This is my crystal garden. I have a couple of them. I'll see if I can show it to you. Um, 
it's just a really pretty plate with a bunch of crystals on it. So I have different crystals around my house. And these were the ones that said, put us together, create a little garden, and anybody coming to the Arkansas retreat and putting their name in this. And this is attuning all of us together and attuning us to the crystals in the earth already. So people, the cool thing is, is when you do work, uh, could decide to come on one of my retreats or, or do the school or whatever, you the, the energy starts right away. So <laughs> you'll get shifts right away. <laughs> and uh, it's good, it's fun, but not always. Ah, exactly what people expect. So go ahead and get comfortable wherever you are. I love my crystals too, Pauline. <laughs> I agree. Um, yes, I come home. We don't have any children at home anymore, but we go out, we come home, and then we open the door and I say, hi, we're home. And um, I'm actually talking to everything, my plants, the walls, everything is alive, but I'm also talking to these. So Chris used to say, there's nobody here anymore. And I said, I know, but um, these are my friends. So I want to say hi, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun when the whole world comes alive to you and you realize that you're an energy being inside of an energy universe and you can uh, communicate and enjoy. One of the other things is beauty. This is a good point to make as we're talking about authority. So we perceive authority uh, to have power. And to own our power, we have to move into a state of acceptance and beyond. And beauty holds power. And this is one of the coolest things I learned long time ago from a couple different mentors that I had. So when you find something beautiful, you feel attracted to it. It, oh, it holds power for you. It's like a power source. It's like a power pack. So if you really are drawn to these, if you feel recently after my retreat in March that we do here with pyramids and dolphins and everything, Amethyst started to talk to me and I had a few pieces. I have one with my big pieces here, but um, I had to go get some more because it was just like all of a sudden I couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't look at it enough, think about it, hold it, touch it. I'd carry around a little plate of them everywhere I went in the house. And that was in that moment, it was so beautiful to me. I couldn't get enough of it. Right. And so that's how you know that something's holding power for you is if, it, if it's so beautiful that you just can't get enough of it. You got to put it on your wall or, you know, you've got to the ocean is is probably my number one thing for healing and aligning. And so now I get to see it from my house and I can get in it every day. And that helps me align with my authority because I feel Oh, I feel whole, right? I feel complete. I feel like I'm, oh, I've got enough of my nature and my elements around me. So we want you to surround yourself with power, which is like giving yourself sort of a battery charger every day. And that is different for everybody. So what is beautiful to you, you should bring into your environment, beautiful sounds, beautiful smells, beautiful sights, beautiful colors, uh, beautiful little uh, allies and friends and elements. And really notice that, acknowledge it, give it the um, respect that it's due because it has a lot of power for you. It's not just, oh, it's so pretty. If you really love it, it does hold power. Okay, good. <sighs> so you can go ahead and close your eyes and relax wherever you are. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to begin by moving some energy, doing some light body. We're going to create a chamber that we're going to travel in and there's a golden cone of light above and below and we're all wrapped in the all-seeing eye so you can imagine you're in sort of like a spaceship that's traveling through and in every possible direction there's everything you've ever needed to know past present future here there anywhere and you can relax you can relax deeper and deeper because right now in this moment you can see and feel that you have a connection to everything that was and everything that is and everything that you are. And the more you relax deeper into this moment, the more you feel yourself letting go of needing to think or to plan or to worry and just melting into the moment. Melting into the moment. 
That's it, just allowing your body to relax. So whatever you're sitting on or laying on, go ahead and feel yourself relaxing. Feel your back. Allow your awareness and your attention to the back of your head, to the, your shoulders, to every place that that chair or that couch or that bed is touching you. And just as you notice it, begin to feel as if it's a hand. It's a giant hand of an angel or some beautiful loving being. And they're saying, just relax, just relax into me. And you feel yourself sort of melting into your couch, wherever you are pressing up against what's holding you up, you release and let it hold you up, surrendering deeper and deeper, allowing your body to relax and relax and relax and relax. And now just allowing yourself to focus on the sound of my voice and to let your hands go, let your arms release. And to continue to allow this relaxing feeling to pour down through your back, your arms, and your body. <clears throat> deeper and deeper, this relaxation goes. You feel yourself melting more and more and more into this beautiful hand. And this beautiful hand of light is beginning to radiate some kind of glow. And you realize that this is the full moon. She is holding you. And she's glowing. And that glow is radiating up through you, coming in through your back and your shoulders and your neck. You feel yourself relax even deeper. You feel this glow coming into your heart center and relaxing everything that's tight, relaxing those walls, relaxing those places where you're disconnected or hidden. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath in, bring it in through your nose, feel it pouring into your lungs, feel it pouring into your heart, and let it go <sighs> like a waterfall washing down your body, down through your knees and your ankles and your feet. You feel even more relaxed as this glow continues to move through you. You feel it in your belly now coming up from your back, relaxing your lower back, your spine, and your hips. You feel this sense of oh, letting go, sinking deeper and deeper, letting go, sinking deeper and deeper. That's it. And now you're almost completely enveloped in this beautiful, soft glow and this love of Luna, the moon. You feel her presence around you, holding you, loving you, respecting you, adoring you. Deeper and deeper, you relax and let go, allowing your legs and your hips and your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, and all the way down to your toes, just to be enveloped in this loving glow and releasing any tension, releasing any attachments. You feel around your ankles and your wrists a sensation of deep, relaxation and the light and glow goes deeper in as if you're dissolving away lifetime after lifetime pattern after pattern of knots and ropes and ties and shackles and attachments anything that's been keeping you tied down keeping you closed in, keeping you from opening, expanding, opening and expanding, expressing yourself, anything that's keeping you from fully opening your heart, following your passion, expressing yourself, seeing yourself, 
you see this glow moving through and you feel an opening in your inner eye. You feel an opening in your crown. And as that is opening, this light is pouring in, pouring in to your pineal, your pituitary, your whole inner eye. And as it's infusing it, it's like it's drinking it up. It's just drinking it up like it's been thirsty. It's been in the desert. It's been waiting for this love, for this nurturing, for this light to pour in. And it's as if your whole head is expanding and clouds are clearing. And out from your inner eye, this light begins to glow, lighting your way, showing you more and more. You feel it begin to move from your throat up to your inner eye, down to your throat, back and forth, opening that, and now down to your heart and back up, from your eye and your crown to your throat to your heart. And now, like a waterfall, this energy inside of you begins to fall down into your belly, and it's beginning to light up the center of your will, your solar plexus, your place of power, your place of expressing your authority in the world. And you begin to see and feel, I am ready and willing and open and receptive to receive, to know, and to release that which is holding me from knowing, trusting, and listening to my own inner voice. I am ready and willing to release and to see, to bring to the surface all that has been keeping me in fear of authority and handing my power away to those outside of me. I'm ready and willing for this to light up down deeper into my sacral chakra and into my root chakra. These places where we feel safe or secure or not. We feel abundant and wealthy and worthy or not. Where we hold our secret powers and our secret shadows. And just feel that now I accept myself and everything I am, everything I've been, everything. And in this moment of acceptance, we feel that connection from the moon down through us into the earth. And feel yourself now. These rays of light are beginning to come from the earth, coming from our mother, the mother of our bodies, the mother of form, the mother of everything in life that we touch, we taste, and we enjoy. Gaia, Mother Earth, we now attune to you. We welcome you. And we ask for a clear and open channel. We'd like to phone call. We'd like to open a clear call to the crystal kingdom, the crystal beds, the master kingdoms, the earth keepers, the wisdom, the crystal grid in Arkansas, Brazil, Madagascar, Mexico, all around the planet, we ask to be brought into the network. We ask to bring in this moonlight and bring in this illumination to help you as well flow with this energy to come back into your authority, to awaken to your courage. And together, we're going to raise ourselves up that we all remember who we truly are, what we're really meant to be, and that we are supported, we are loved, we are greatly and richly and abundantly guided in every way. It's time for the earth, for each of us, for all life on this planet to realize that we are one, and we are still our own authority. That alike and equal are not the same. That we are equal. That we are unified. That as one, we can feel compassion, we can share wisdom and knowledge and strength, but we never once, ever, 
take on or keep any energies that do not belong, support, or nurture. So in this moment, begin to feel that flow from that crystal light, from that moon, the light moving through your mind, illuminating the patterns, the fears, the beliefs. You may see and feel them and know them and see memories and receive all kinds of information, or you may just simply feel it moving and understand that you are now allowing for these old patterns and beliefs that said, I must keep quiet, or I must not speak up, or I'll be humiliated, outcast, ridiculed, criticized, hurt, beheaded, burned at the stake. Something bad will happen if I own my authority, if I speak up, if I share my passion, if I lead, if I love, if I'm out there, if I'm seen, if I'm vulnerable, if I am able to fully express the truth of who I am and own the light within me and vibrate at the highest possible place of integrity from within me and share that love and compassion that I have for myself and the acceptance and trust of my own authority with all those I meet with every breath at every step, every thought and every feeling. I share this new union Feel now all the way through your emotional body, even through your financial body, your feelings around owning your authority with money, being worthy of receiving it, feeling like you're a good manager of it, feeling like you know what to do with it, feeling like it's not going to change you, it's going to support you. Now really allow that crystal energy to come from the earth and specifically feel those waters, those underground caverns, the giant, giant master crystals, the crystal families, the caves, the crystal bottom of lakes, Just tune into them now and feel like you are the connection. You're the center of a figure eight where the moon energy blends with this crystalline energy from the earth. And allow the two to move through you, illuminating, dissolving, opening clogged pathways to drain away, to bring in new And all the while, just be in a state, open and receptive, ready and willing, allowing and accepting it to move through you, and great gratitude. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Today is the day that I allow the true power, beauty, clarity, and flow of why I am here what I have to offer. I now trust, listen to, and open a clear and open connection to my highest good, my highest wisdom, my highest selves. I am my own authority. Today, here and now, I allow the crystal kingdom to amplify the energies of this moon and amplify the dissolving, the unlocking, the unhooking, the detaching of any energies, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, in any dimension, any life, in any time that hold me back from embracing my light, embracing my worth, my value. Feel yourself getting lighter and lighter and lighter 
as the crystal kingdom these beautiful crystals in Arkansas we're going to come to play with and be with are sending beams of light and energy amplifying you are becoming lighter and lighter and as you do you're rising up from any place that you've been into a place of neutral willingness into a place of acceptance and you see yourself forgiving giving back letting go of all of those heavy energies those fears of authority or speaking up or being good enough those fears of success or failure those fears of being seen being heard being good enough all of them are fading away below as you go up and up and up lighter and lighter amplifying your energy you move through you're now moving into harmony you're feeling thoughts that are harmonious you're seeing and feeling the connections and the lightness around you you're beginning to acknowledge and see who you truly are in this light let it be let it be let it be up and up and up you go expanding now you're feeling as if you are transcending all of these fears transcending the concept of authority and lack of power and giving away you're transcending all of it and feeling compassion completely enveloping you up and up and up you're now a shining bright light you're clear on who you are declare in your heart i am that i am ea escher ea i am that i am ea escher ea feel the giant crystals beginning to expand out and amplify i am that i am i am that i am i am the light i am my own authority i am put any other words in there i am a master healer i am a loving being i am an amazing mother i am what are you i am i am i am and most of all i am now connected and reconnected to the truth of who i am feel that line from the earth to the moon and now that light will pulse back and forth through you back and forth through you back and forth up and down releasing flushing rejuvenating renewing the light coming in and being amplified by that crystal kingdom this connection will be with you for the next 3 days through the whole full moon through the energies that are opening into july into the next step in becoming the person becoming aligned with your true soul signature frequency becoming aligned with the missions that you are here coming aligned with being becoming fully you take a deep breath put your hands on your heart <sighs> breathe yourself back into your body put a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly <sighs> take your hands rub them down over your legs and your knees up your arms give yourself a big hug take them up hold your face hold your face with love and kindness and then put your hands over your eyes and just feel the energy pouring into your eyes opening them up awakening you feeling alive awake rejuvenated flowing glowing light connected so much lighter and then just take your hands and tap your crown do, 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 like this right up at the top here wow you're all glowing mm, yum 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 mm. all right so 
Number one, take your time coming back into your body. Two, write down anything you felt, you saw, you experienced. It's just the beginning of this connection, this opening of your light. Go into your day. Think about how you can own your voice, own your authority. Speak up when it's appropriate. Allow yourself to be the person who can hold space for others. Allow yourself to share if you have an expertise or something to give. And allow yourself to be in here, to stay right in this juicy center of your own crystal heart and bring out the love from within you. A lot of us have spent a lot of our lives, thank you, um, projecting ourselves out of ourselves, looking back in at ourselves and judging ourselves from exterior places. Now, you're going to come right back into the center. You're going to say, this is who I am. I fully accept it and play with it. Enjoy it. There's this beautiful light pulse coming from you, from the crystal uh, in the planet, up through you to the moon and back down. So play with it. Have fun. Spread the light everywhere you go. See those footsteps lighting up on the ground. Fill it with what you want. What is the attitude and atmosphere on your planet? What is the energy that you're exuding into the world? Go spread that love, that joy, that delight, uh, that compassion, whatever it is. Be fully you. Thank you for being fully you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for playing with me. I hope you'll come and join me in Arkansas. You go to lightbodyschool.com slash crystal lake. It's going to be three amazing days of energy work and deep soul work and inner work like this and playing with crystals and going out to the lakes, to the crystal islands, doing attunements, gathering them in the ground, taking them with you and going and soaking in the hot baths. It's going to be amazing. And you can also are welcome to join Light Body School. We're still enrolling. We're having a blast. All of that is at lightbodyschool.com. In the meantime, let's go ahead and thank this beautiful light chamber that we've been in. And we allow this to be open, but unbroken. We thank all of the guides that were here for us. We thank Luna, the moon. We thank the earth so much, the crystal kingdom and Gaia. We thank our beautiful bodies. We thank this beautiful technology that we can connect. And we give this great big gratitude bomb out from us to the world. Three, two, one. <sighs> beautiful. Thank you so much. Namaste in La Catch. Bye. Thank you, Pauline. Thanks, Pamela. Ciao. Have a great day. Hi, Omani. Mm -hmm.